is Becky and we are looking at the Attitude Part 1 Theory Test Q&A. Hope you enjoy, let's get started. Question 1. At a Pelican Crossing, the flashing amber light means you must A. Stop and wait for the green light B. Stop and wait for the red light C. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross D. Give way to pedestrians who are already on the crossing. Give way to pedestrians who are already on the crossing. Pelican crossings are pedestrian friendly intelligent crossings which means they are controlled by push buttons which change the signals. Pelican crossings have no red and amber stage before the green light. Instead they use a flashing amber light which means you must give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. If the crossing is clear, you may or should continue ahead. Question two. Why is it important to not, move, to not wave pedestrians across the crossing? A, they may get confused. B, there may be another vehicle coming. C, the pedestrian may not be ready to cross. D. The pedestrian may not see your signal. There may be another vehicle coming. You should always be prepared to slow down, stop and give way to pedestrians at crossings. You should not wave at them to cross the road as they may not see you wave, they may not be ready to cross and another driver may have not seen you and may not be able to stop safely. Question 3. Tailgating means A. You are following another vehicle too closely. B. You are not following another vehicle close enough. C. You are driving with fog lights on. D. You are using hand signals to communicate with other road users. You are following another vehicle too closely. Tailgating is the term given to the dangerous practice of following another vehicle too close. This is very common on motorways and dual carriageways. This is very dangerous because it restricts your view of the road ahead and leaves you no room to stop safely if the vehicle suddenly brakes. Question 4. Only a fool breaks the A. One second rule B. Two second rule C. Three second rule D. Four second rule In dry conditions you should always leave a time gap of two seconds. Question 5. In wet road conditions, you should increase your car's time gap by A. 2 times B. 3 times C. 4 times D. 10 times If the roads are wet are in wet conditions, you should double this time gap to 4 seconds as your tyres have less grip on the road. Question 6. Which of the following vehicles will have blue flashing beacons? Pick three answers. A. Bomb disposal. B. Blood transfusion. C. Police patrol. D. Breakdown recovery. E. Motorway maintenance. Your answers are A. Bomb disposal, B. Blood transfusion and C. Police patrol. You should always move clear and out of the way for all emergency vehicles when it is safe to do so. It is particularly useful to keep this in mind when you are distracted by the radio or chatting with friends whilst driving. Question 7. 
following this vehicle too close is a bad idea because A. Your view ahead is decreased B. Your car's engine could overheat C. The lorry may speed up D. Oncoming vehicles may not see you The answer is A. Your view ahead is decreased you should never tailgate another vehicle because you should always be able to stop within the distance seen to be clear. Tailgating is very dangerous. Not only will you not be able to stop if they suddenly brake, but large vehicles won't be able to see you also. Question 8. Which emer emergency vehicle uses a green flashing beacon? A. Bomb disposal B. Fire engine C. Road Gritter D. Doctor's Car A doctor's car uses the green flashing beacon. Question 9. Diamond shaped signs give instructions to A. Emergency vehicles B. Bus drivers C. Tram drivers D. Learner drivers these signs only apply to tram drivers. You should learn about their meaning so that you are able to respond and anticipate the actions of the driver. For a full and comprehensive list of road signs, Know Your Signs is a great book to buy. Question 10. Which vehicle is more vulnerable on roads where trams operate? A. Buses B. Taxis C motorbikes, D cycles. Cycles are more vulnerable due to the slim tram tracks and metal surfaces which could cause a cyclist to slip or get wedged in the crevices. Question 11. When should you use your horn? A. To tell other drivers what you think of them. B. To thank another driver for giving way to you. C. To alert others of your presence. D. To greet other road users. To alert others of your presence. You should only ever give a horn signal to inform others of your presence. You should never use it to thank someone or in annoyance as the sound could distract and find other road users and pedestrians. At which crossing are cyclists allowed to ride across with pedestrians? A. Toucan B. Pelican C. Zebra D. Puffin Answer is A. Toucan a toucan crossing is a touch controlled crossing which allows a rider to remain on his bike. These types of crossings are often found near hospitals, universities and heavily built up areas. Question 13. You are approaching a zebra crossing. A, a, a pedestrian is on the pavement waiting to cross the road. You should. A. Stop and give way B. Increase your speed and continue C. Slow down but do not stop D. Sound your horn You should stop and give way. If a pedestrian is already crossing, they have priority and you must give way. But if they are waiting to cross the road, you should slow down, stop and give way in case they step out in front of you. Question 14. When turning right in a one way street, you should A. Position right, B. Position left, C. Position left of centre line, D. Stay in the middle of the road. You should position right unless the road markings say otherwise. Always position early to allow road users to continue in the left lane. Question 15. 
When should you only flash other road users? A. To inform them of your presence. B. To give way to someone. C. To show your annoyance. D. To show you are about to turn. You should only flash your headlights to inform other road users of your presence. Do not use them to give way to other vehicles, show your noise or priority. Your signal could be confusing to other road users. Question 16. On a fast road the driver following you is too close. You should A. Ignore the driver, continue as you are. B. Gently increase, decrease your speed and increase the gap in front. C. Signal to the driver behind to wave him past. D. Increase your speed. Gently decrease your speed and increase the gap in front. It is really important to decrease your speed and increase your gap in front. If the car in front of you suddenly stops, your car will be the one in the middle of two vehicles. Never increase your speed, as the following vehicle might also increase their speed. Question 17. A bus is waiting at a bus stop indicating right. You should A. Slow down and give way if it's safe to do so. B. Increase your speed and not let the bus out. C. Sound your horn and flash your lights. D. Flash your lights and slow down. Slow down and give way if it's safe to do so. You should always be aware of buses and if it is safe to slow down and give way, do so. You should never sound your horn or flash your headlights unless it is to inform them of your presence. Question 18. You are driving on a road and a van pulls out in front of you. You should A. Sound your horn B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance C. Flash your headlights D. Do nothing different Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. Question 19. You should avoid dazzling other road users behind you whilst waiting in a traffic queue at night. You should A. Apply the handbrake only B. Apply the footbrake only C. Switch off the headlights D. Use both handbrake and footbrake you should apply the handbrake only. Brake lights can dazzle drivers behind just like full beam can also. You should apply the handbrake only. Turning your lights off completely could be dangerous. Question 20. You are driving at the maximum speed limit. A driver behind is trying to overtake. You should A. Keep your vehicle steady and try and allow the other vehicle to overtake B. Wave the other vehicle to overtake C. Accelerate D. Move near the car in front Always keep a steady course and try not to overreact by increasing or decreasing your speed Allow the car behind to match your car's speed and increase to get past you Thank you for giving us your time and I hope you've enjoyed this section of attitude towards the theory training syllabus that we are preparing for you. Please leave a comment in the uh, comments description box on this video and we would like you to uh, head over to our website at www.lpodacademy.co.uk where you can join our mailing list to get driving test tips. Look forward to the next video. See you soon. Bye.